environment, the, the environment you work in. And uh, one of the main issues I, uh, I noticed with, uh, with developers not uh, using the, the integration test uh, was the issue with setting up the proper environment and running it uh, in a proper way, in a way that, um, that is reliable. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm going to show you a little shortcut a little uh, yeah, shortcut to, to how you can set it up. Uh, that it will be flexible. It, you, you would be able to keep it in your environment, in your uh, repository. So yeah, first thing is phpunit.xml. I uh, extracted just two parts that are the most important pieces in the phpunit uh, XML file. Uh, you can spot the test suites, and you can see the uh, constant names that are used by the integration test. Uh, I would like you to uh, to remember uh, that actually all the all the rest of the file is is not so important. The, the most important are these two. And uh, let me show you uh, how I configured my environment and how I run it, because that's the environment you will have to use uh, when you when you train, when you make yourself a testing ninja. And one second. Okay. Um, okay. Mm. So uh, the, the most important, as I've mentioned, uh, is of course PHP Unit XML. Uh, it's located in uh, Dev Tests Integration and PHP Unit XML. And you can see the part I, I've mentioned to you, which is um, of course test suites. It points out where are the our tests located. If you are, uh, if you still still have some legacy code, some legacy modules that uh, that are stored in upcode, uh, you you probably need to limit the uh, the execution to just your namespace. So it can be Ninja in our case because we uh, we will play with uh, we are going to play with a Ninja namespace. But if you if all the code in upcode is yours, you can also I replace it with uh, with the star, uh, so it will verify all the modules uh, in the in the upcode directory. So that's the first important part in upcode uh, PHP Unit XML. The second part, as I've mentioned, are the configuration files that are pointed out by consts. And you can see I'm pointing out uh, install config mysql.php, and that's the second one that took me the most. Uh, in when I when I was trying to prepare the environment uh, for running integration tests, so if you are afraid or if you are just annoyed with setting up this environment, uh, you can you can just re reproduce what I show you. So let's let me show you first the uh, this file which shows how it looks uh, with with the uh, out of the box when when delivered with uh, with Magento, so you can see that there is a configuration for DB host, DB password, uh, Elasticsearch, and the others like and the other stuff. Uh, but depends on what environment you're running. Uh, it's not the perfect configuration. So uh, to make it more flexible. Uh, here at Swift Otter, we prepared a little bit extended version of it. So you can see that we try to get the credentials for DB host, DB user, and so on uh, from environment and fall back to some variab variables uh, that are uh, that are actually the, the, the good fallback for our local environments. As we use Warden, for running tests, for running uh, local environments. Uh, these values uh, like TMP and MySQL uh, are just the uh, default values for Warden. Uh, 
what is also important, uh, make sure that when you are running the integration tests on your uh, on the same environment in the same Docker container or Docker Compose uh, section as uh, as the regular testing flow or development flow, you need to remember to set different uh, database numbers. So that's ultra important because uh, otherwise, when you run integration tests, it breaks your uh, regular uh, development environment. So it's it it kind of lead into lead you into uh, some issues. Um, but there are two more files. So what's what's the point of having two more files? One is config global PHP, which provides um, the, the configuration settings that are used during the uh, during the, the test execution, and uh, you can put there some, uh, for example, some connection credentials or maybe not credentials, but connection settings for some third party uh, service that you are playing with uh, when running integration tests. You can literally um, use that as a storage of, uh, of configuration that you'd like to use during the testing. And the second one is actually the setup command config. Uh, sometimes you need to adjust the application after running the um, after running the, uh, the sorry let me rephrase that uh, sometimes in order to to get application into the valid state you need to run extra commands after installing magento and these commands should be set uh, just here in the uh, setup command config. Uh, for now, we are not going to use any of them, but uh, but it's good to be aware that there is a trick to to prepare environment even further, not only when it comes to configuration. Okay, so uh, we have we have quite clear situation here when it comes to running tests. Uh, we have PHP unit XML, we have uh, install config MySQL, and now I'm going to show you uh, the important uh, thing about running tests. So in theory, it should be enough to run bin, vendor bin Magento, uh, sorry, of course, vendor bin uh, PHP unit. Uh, and then provide the configuration of the integration test. So you can assume that dev tests integration PHP unit XML would work, but that's the tricky part um, because actually it doesn't work like this. In the PHP unit configuration has some issues with uh, finding out the, the right base directory. That's why we need to uh, we need to always prefix that with current directory. So let's run it again with pwd, and you can see that our tests were run. You need to remember that for the first time, um, the execution would take even longer, like much longer. So let me show you. I, I'm going to enable cleanup, which means that before running every single, like before the tests run, uh, Magento is going to be re reinstalled. So let's run it again, and you can see uh, you can see the difference. Like the timing is now much longer. Um, okay, let it run. And what's the difference? In the meantime, I'm going to use the time. Uh, what's the difference between one and another? Uh, the difference is that when you need to verify that from the very beginning, the environment is going to be prepared correctly by Magento, by your module or third party module, uh, it's good to use um, it's good to use test cleanup. But 
when you are starting, like when you are continuously working on uh, improving, developing, developing some flow, uh, you don't need to verify every single time when if Magento installs correctly. So uh, then you can disable tests cleanup in order to, uh, to actually start where it finished last time. Okay, we are still waiting for uh, for a test execution for installing Magento and uh, and yeah, executing our tests. What happens under the hood? Just to to make it uh, clear, under the hood, the whole database was uh, was dropped and the new data, like the, the whole Bean Magento setup install is being executed. And oh yeah, and that's actually a good point to uh, to get back to install config MySQL uh, for a moment, because I'm going to open, uh, I'm going to open another window and show you something. Uh, Bean Magento setup install help. And we can see that uh, there are some uh, parameters that you can provide. So these, like these here, are exactly the same like these here. So if you want to, to for example, uh, provide Zookeeper uh, host in in the um, in the PHP unit configuration. All you need to do is actually to add exactly the same value like here, XXX. Um, so that's, that's how it works. If you don't know how to configure uh, this part, it comes from, uh, from setup install command. And uh, that's important part I, I haven't I, I, I haven't mentioned, but uh, for example, uh, in my previous project, I used AMQ, AMQP or so RabbitMQ uh, for integration tests. So I had to extend this configuration with the uh, AMQP, um, AMQP uh, host, and and so on. So that's that's how you configure it. It's still running, so uh, I will let it go. Uh, like I, I will let it work even longer. In the meantime, I, I will just move one step further with our uh, with our presentation with our uh, slides. Okay, so now you know that setting up environment uh, is not a rocket science. Everything you need to do is just. Uh, set up the PHP unit XML file. And the second one uh, is to set up the, uh, the, the installation scripts, the environment installation scripts. And now the part for ninjas or people who want to be ninjas. First is, uh, actually I took them from actual uh, ninja training course. Uh, so that's, uh, these are not focused 100% on, on, the, uh, on the IT environment. It's uh, focused on the, um, it's focused on, on the actual ninja training. That's why uh, some, some might be uh, ambiguous when it comes to IT. Uh, so first, use the information wisely and Ninjas are expected to uh, to collect information, to keep it, and analyze, and then use the knowledge uh, in the right time, in the right way. So we have to be the same uh, like these ninjas. We need to uh, we need to collect information. We need to analyze it and turn uh, turn it into action, into like use it in our action. First, and that's based on my personal experience as testing ninjas, as TDD ninjas, before writing tests, double check with the business or with domain expert, product owner, and or whoever is responsible for the project on the client side, 
about their expectations. Because sometimes, um, not sometimes, but tests should reflect the expectations that people place um, in, in front of, of the application. So before even starting your PHP storm or VS code, always check that you have all the information uh, that you need. And let me let me use a simple example of something that is usually a um, code kata for uh, for developers. Uh, developers usually play with different simple applications like um, currency exchange. Uh, currency exchange is is uh, is actually returning the, the value, uh, the amount in one currency when you provide uh, another currency. And there's um, usually when I when I run these workshops, I, I realized that, realize that developers start writing code before asking me, hey, how should we handle the currency that is not supported, for example? So my strong recommendation is always collect the business knowledge and requirements before starting writing the code uh, that's, that makes uh, work easier, that makes work uh, smoother and less time is wasted. As we want to become ninjas, we need to collect the knowledge. And collecting knowledge is also the tricky part because uh, there are good and bad sources. For example, uh, sources that were uh, that were good like five years ago, like Stack Overflow or uh, Magento uh, Magento Forum a Community Board, five years five years ago these sources were perfect because. Uh, most of the questions were answered in a way that uh, was quite um, quite correct. Yeah, let's let's say it was correct. Uh, now these sources are not perfect because um, most of the responses are no longer in line with uh, Magento requirements, with Magento uh, security or Magento quality gui guidelines. So uh, that's why it's it's worth to know who to follow and what to follow. Uh, I'm going to start from the bottom because um, the, the main resource I, I would recommend is actually following the external developer, uh, extension developer network, uh, xdn.org, uh, which uh, provides some insights, some, um, some blog posts uh, with uh, with with recommendations for for developers who develop uh, develop the extensions, uh, and they are up to date. They are um, they are Magento independent. Uh, I mean, like of course they work with Magento, but these are people who are, who don't work for Adobe. They don't. They are completely independent, independent from the you know, from all the politics, and uh, they provide uh, just. They share their experience. Second one, which is first on our list, is uh, is actually um, Magento Integration Test Suite. When you enter, when you want to learn the right ways to approach integration testing, uh, you don't need to to look around uh, on external modules. It's just enough if you. Um, if you open uh, Magento integration tests uh, that are um, that are shipped with with Magento and read the tests, for example, um, I'm going to uh, switch again to our uh, PHP Storm. So we have test tests integration. Uh, I'm going to um, collapse it for a second. We have test suite Magento, and if you are not sure how to how to handle uh, the, the checkout flow with how to cover checkout flow with the integration tests, and uh, you'd like to check uh, how it's done, you can find it here. So actually, you can you can verify um, you can verify sorry uh, 
for example, card handling, uh, how it's done in Magento Core, yeah, that the checkout session is being created, uh, the simple product is being uh, taken into as, as uh, identifier, and then we um, then we get the quote item ID, uh, which is extracted to separate uh, to separate method. Of course, I'm going to hop there. Uh, okay, this actually wasn't a good example. Um, yeah, configure action uh, simple product. So we have. Uh, sorry for that. Ah, okay, I see why. Uh, because this specific example is already using the, uh, the quote with a simple product added into it. Uh, but I will cover that in a second. Uh, so just wanted to mention that every single time when you need to check how something works, you can refer to existing tests. And uh, that's why I, I pointed out the, the first one, which is Magento uh, GitHub. Uh, also, it's worth to mention the dev docs. Dev docs, um, especially when it comes to uh, when it comes to, to integration tests, uh, provide some uh, some insights when you when you are stuck. Uh, and you can see how to configure stuff, how to uh, set the, the entry values. You need to remember that documentation for Magento 2 is completely different from Magento 1 because it exists, and it's it's quite well designed, quite well uh, uh, delivered. You can see that even Finay Cobb uh, contributed to it, so thanks Finay. Um, and you can check every single uh, every single detail uh, here. Last but not least. Uh, something I contributed to is actually Warden documentation. Although it's on Warden's website, it doesn't have to be uh, locked up to Warden because uh, the configuration that is described here uh, will work with any other envir environment. So if you use um, Mark Schuss Docker environment, it will work also as well. Uh, and you can see how to configure unit tests, JavaScript unit tests, and integration tests. It's quite well uh, described. You can uh, you can find definition for uh, for all the stuff. And also something I already uh, already mentioned um, that you need to run PWD uh, so current directory when running tests. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's uh, that's it. In the meantime, let's check. Okay, our tests uh, were executed, and we can see that um, the actual tests were executed in uh, zero seconds, but <laughs> preparing an environment took a while. So yeah. So now you know. Uh, my favorite four resources when it comes to gathering knowledge and uh, places that provide reliable uh, information. I would like to also ask you to use the right tools. And my two favorite places, and usually I, I just take the, the insights or just solutions from there. First is TDD wizard uh, fixtures. And let's open them because TDD wizard fixtures re offers the replacement for Magento uh, for Magento fixtures in a cleaner, nicer way. So for example, if you need to verify that uh, that customer account is being correctly created or uh, your Customer repository works correctly. Uh, you can uh, you can use uh, these fixtures. The only thing that you need to do is actually to install uh, install the uh, the TDD wizard dependency uh, with uh, with Composer, 
and I already I've already done it. So let me just take the cleanup back to disabled so we wouldn't have to wait so long again. And uh, let's play with, with just a little test. And this time you will see how to uh, how easy it is to, to write some basic tests. Uh, so I will create the new one. It will be customer. Um, uh, the customer repository tests. Okay. And um, as it's also PHP unit test, the only thing we need to extend is actually a test case to tell PHP unit we are going to run test here. Okay. And um, this will be for basic, uh, basic test public function test account exists after it's created. Okay, and now uh, I'm showing. I, I'm going to show you uh, show you the the flow. I'm creating tests, but um, the rules behind it will be uh, will be covered in a few minutes. So let me do it quickly. Uh, what we expect? We expect that after our uh, after our test. Um, or actually, as a result of our test, the customer account will exist. So let's um, let's make the uh, sorry. Let's make the assumption that we expect account to exist. So. Sorry. In order to, to use the, uh, the customer repository, we need to initiate it first. And in order to do so, I'm going to set up. OK, we can inherit the parent one. It's not critically important, but we can do it. And now um, that's the part about the, uh, the, the integration tests framework, because Integration tests framework comes with Bootstrap, um, and this is um, Magento test framework Bootstrap. Sorry, I'm I'm wrong. Bootstrap helper, sorry, test framework helper, Bootstrap, and we get the instance of. Um, We get the object manager instance in order to uh, to be able to initiate uh, to initiate some classes. Uh, so we have object manager and object man. Uh, of course, you shouldn't use object manager in the code, but in tests, it's critically important to use object manager. Now we need to use the repository. So uh, I'm going to turn it into property because we are going to use it across the test suite. Uh, so this um, customer repository is actually object manager. It's exactly the same as you use it in the code customer repository interface. Okay, let's create the property. Unfortunately, here you you can't do uh, the typed properties. Uh, so so I'm I'm doing this with annotations because setup is not a constructor. So at the moment of uh, of any call to, uh, to 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 customer repository, it would throw uh, throw an error. That's why I I just use p p uh, p p h p annotation dot block. Okay, so now this customer repository, and we would like to get the customer by their email. So in theory, you could you could use, for example, Lukash at ninja.com. And now, uh, of course, it's going to fail, but uh, let's run it. 
Okay, we have error. And the error is that um, no, no such entity with email lukash at ninja.com on website equals one. So our repository doesn't provide this, this, this customer. And now the trick is that when we get back to, uh, to TDD wizard, um, we can create this, uh, this customer. So let's use the example, customer builder, a customer. Okay, so customer builder, and you can see it. Uh, the hint says that we have the uh, we have the, the this class. So let's use it. We would like to create a customer, and we can configure this customer just a little. So we are going to use custom email because otherwise it's it's using Faker under the hood to uh, randomize data. So let's do this, lukash at ninja.com. And now uh, when we finish with it like this, it also wouldn't work. So the fixture wouldn't be created um, because uh, in order to save the data in database, uh, you need to tell application to build the, uh, to build the, 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 the fixture. Why it works this way? Because sometimes you would like to use the same builder multiple times. So for example, builder equals this, and then build multiple uh, elements with the same, uh, same, same base. So for example, here it will be uh, with confirmation, for example, with confirmation A field. And then with confirmation B uh, built, it will be create uh, it, it will create two customers. So you need to be aware that uh, that it's just a builder. So so you need to build the customer. And let's try it now. And it passed. So you can see very basic test. Um, that customer account exists after it's created. But um, this is very important to be aware of the side effects because uh, now if we comment out this part and run the test again, okay, that's actually good. <laughs> um, what I wanted to show you was actually uh, the persistence of tests. Uh, but by default, it looks like uh, it isolates the, um, the tests. Uh, so I will explain this in a minute. Now, uh, yeah, so we have the basic test. You can see that it's running, it works, and we used the fixture. Every single time when you need to uh, when you need to use the when you need to use the, the, the fixture for some purpose, uh, you can use the one from TDD Wizard, and that's why I'm showing that to you because it's a great resource of uh, of knowledge, of examples, of um, of shortcuts for writing tests. Second tool I would like you to know is external de developer network uh, GitHub Actions. So they built um, a set of uh, not only tools, but also instructions to use them uh, to, um, to actually run quality assurance tools in your workflow. You don't need to be DevOps. You don't need to have uh, GitHub knowledge in order to run uh, static code analysis, PHP stun, uh, mass detector, or our lovely integration tests with uh, with the framework. So I strongly recommend, oh, sorry, strongly recommend uh, looking at these, um, at these resources. Okay, I, I haven't taken water for me. That's a shame. Uh, 
last but not least, let me turn on the presentation again. I would like you, as ninjas, I would like you to know the proper terms in testing. Because you are, as developers, you are communicating with other developers. Uh, so you need to know what's the difference between stab or mock, with, between the fake or, um, or, I don't know, fixture and so on. Uh, first and most important you can start with is actually to find out what's the difference between stab and mock and then extend your knowledge playing with uh, different presentations online. Uh, the first one, actually, stab is uh, stabbing the, the response. So, uh, so for example, um, let me... Let me find the, the good example. Okay, at the moment I, I don't have anything in my mind. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, but stop is just to return the value, the the, the stop value, while mock is actually verifying if you interact, if you play with uh, with specific method. And the example is is actually on the screen that um, that if you if you are playing with uh, with some uh, with some mocked class, you can you can mock uh, the response of a, of a method. Um, in order to, to to run application in a specific uh, in a specific conditions, the another like another important difference is that uh, mocks can fail your test if uh, if some conditions are not met. For example, we can message we have message repository on the screen and it expects uh, to run at least uh, to run exactly once. And if you never save, uh, like if your code never saves the mm, the, the object, it's uh, the message. It actually uh, throws um, throws an error that test is not doing what like the your code is not doing what it ex what it's expected to. And now I'm getting to the point I stopped with the live coding. Uh, I would like you as ninjas to know at least a few of the main annotations. Uh, one is Magento app isolation, then Magento DB isolation, data fixture, data fixture before transaction, and Magento app area. And let me show you them. First, um, first will be uh, actually Magento DB isolation. If you have uh, PHP, oh, sorry, if you have uh, Magento extension uh, for PHP Storm installed, it uh, actually suggests uh, the, the, the the annotations. So I'm going to use uh, DB isolation, and the values are enabled, disabled in uh, in this case. So I'm going to disable the DB isolation, and let's check what happens. What it means that every single time uh, when when the test is run, or actually if there are multiple tests, or maybe this way, public function test account not ex does not exist if not created. So well, let's do it this way. And you remember what happens when uh, when account does not exist? We had this issue a few minutes before. Let's scroll up, and we can see that no such entity exception is being thrown. So if we assert that uh, account does not exist, we need to set our expectation. So let's let's set our expectation. Um, we expect this expect exception and no such entity exception we expect this exception when we call like we try to to get the customer from uh from the um, from the database so for now i'm 
All right, one more moment. I'm going to turn and to remove the, uh, the DB isolation to have it enabled for, for, a, for a while. And we can see that um, that no such entity exception is thrown. And that's actually uh, what I wanted to show be <laughs> previously uh, that it doesn't throw exception here because there is no isolation before between these two tests. So when account customer account was created here, it's still uh, available here. And now what how we can avoid it? We can just add our um, mentioned previously magento db isolation enable. I never remember enable or enabled. Um, seconds, uh, Magento DB isolation uh, enabled. Okay, and we can do the same. Although we don't create any data here, but we can do it the same here. And let's run it again. Now we should get the um, we should get the the, the valid result. Uh, oh yeah. Let's change the email because we still use the, uh, the data from previous uh, from previous test. So let's check it this way. Come on. <laughs> um, this actually means that. Uh, we still have we still have the customer available here at this point. Magento DP isolation enabled. Okay, it's correct. I love live coding uh, for that. Okay. DP isolation it's enabled. We build it. And we don't build anything here, so it should throw exception. Let me check one thing with you. Customer calls answered zero. No, get ID and out for a moment. It's it shouldn't pass. So, okay, it passes. So actually it still has access to the customer. Mm. Okay, one second. I think I know why it's retrieved by email. Okay, I know why it works this way. Um, that's quite tricky because you can see that uh, what we have here is actually the internal object uh, object cache, which means that when customer email is loaded by one class, it's being stored in, in a class um, itself. So every single time when uh, like, sorry, I, I lost my test uh, here. So if we loaded the, uh, the customer here, it's stored in the cache unless the, uh, the class is not reinitiated. Uh, but that's actually a good thing because I'm going to show you a second thing, which is Magento app, iso app isolation which means that if some classes were uh, were initiated uh, previously by previous test it's going to uh, it's going to to actually um, tear down the class and start the the new using the object manager so let me verify that now it should work
Okay, now it works. So that was the reason. Uh, once again, if you if you would like to to follow why it happened, uh, customer repository under the hood uses customer registry. Customer registry is not the database call, so uh, just a data just a um, database installation was not enough as a solution um, because once retrieved by email returns the uh, the the. the customer it also uh, sets it let me show you we have customer load by email after it's loaded it assigns it to the uh, to the object property to the array in object property and if it already exists it's returned without calling the database it's good uh, performance wise but sometimes makes testing uh, a little bit uh, fragile okay so I showed you um, I, show, I showed you two uh, PHP uh, PHP dog annotations one is for DB so if you put DB isolation here uh, what it does it actually uh, it's equivalent of doing like this resource uh, begin transaction and of course it's pseudo code so don't don't treat it as, as a real code resource uh, or connection rollback that's literally the same okay mm. So far, so good. I, I'm not seeing you, so I, I have no idea if you are sleeping or not. Uh, I hope not, because uh, you need to be you need to be cautious as a as a ninja. Uh, other three, I'm going to show you uh, also briefly. So the last one is Magento App Area. And Magento App Area is uh, used to test something that is very specific uh, to specific. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Magento App Area can be used to evaluate some some area of the of the application. So, if some validation should happen only to admin, but not to storefront. Or the other way, you can do. You can perform tests like public function uh, tests, um, phone validation for storefront, and you expect that um, that when creating a customer with specific phone number, it, it will throw exception. Uh, so for example this expects exception and invalid argument exception mm, valid argument exception class and now you try to create customer so customer builder as we know it uh, then with we don't have phone number here, so maybe let's do let's do tax fax validation. So not phone, but tax fax validation for storefront with tax fax uh, AAA, which is definitely not the, the valid tax fax, and then build. But you know that you're Clients sometimes provide invalid data uh, and they expect it to work. So public function test tax but not being validated for admin HTML. In this case, uh, the, the conditions are completely different because customer builder, um, a customer with tax but invalid one, This one should work. So customer, okay, and we as we expect that this um, expect oh. Uh, so 
sorry, of, of course, assert the same. Um, we assert that invalid one will be exactly will be exactly the same. And now, how to tell Magento uh, or testing framework uh, that one should be run on storefront, one on admin? You can, of course, um, use the object manager. Uh, we don't have object manager here, but of course, you could use this state, this object get and application state. Mm, but it's it's not the, the right way, the right approach, because there is an easier way, which is again annotation up magento up area, and now it will be uh, content and here it will be admin HTML. Yeah, admin HTML. Of course, this wouldn't work because we don't have any validation, like any, any code to implement that yet. However, we can run it. And uh, for these two, the test will be run with different, uh, with different environment. You can see the test is failing. Okay, the last one is not failing because uh, of course it's saved correctly. Okay, we are running slowly out of, out of time. I, I took too much time, but okay. So let's focus on the presenta presentation and the demo. Maybe I will ask my, my supervisors. Uh, I will ask my supervisors to give me some more time uh, another day. But let's let's focus on the ninja work. Another thing I wanted you to uh, to point out is that as a ninja. No worries if you if you are martial art ninja or if you are coding ninja, you need to work on your body and your soul, which means that you need to, uh, sorry, okay, which means that you need to uh, you need to take care of uh, of your uh, of your uh, skills, physical skills, but also mental skills, and. Recently, I, I encountered uh, quite a big uh, breakdown. Um, so I, I know things, like some things that help you. Uh, one is playing with your knowledge. Uh, so you need to remember about, uh, about using the knowledge you, you gathered, you collected, and make fun of it. So check what improves your focus. For example, uh, if uh, if there is any, any specific area of Magento or, or testing or, um, or even live uh, that helps you to focus, for example, for me, it, uh, it's, it makes things easier to, uh, to, to, to just uh, write down everything on a paper and then focus on uh, introducing this as a code step by step. And here's another uh, another one. So wait a second. Um, I'm going to, to get fast through the rest of the list, uh, Jesse. Uh, so I, I'm going to wrap up quickly. Uh, like, give me three minutes, please. Uh, so you need to to train your body and your soul. By soul, I mean uh, your mood, your uh, your approach towards work and uh, and and things you do. Uh, when it comes to uh, to body, make sure that you that you use uh, the tools in a proper way and you don't waste your uh, your body. Uh, so. For example, you can use shortcuts uh, when working with your IDE. Uh, three, learn the knowledge in than in nature. And uh, Ninja should not go to sweep, to, to uh, stack overflow and copy solutions. Ninja should be a person who collects the knowledge in its nature. He looks around, he, uh, he checks how things are done, and uh, he takes the lesson from there. And last but not least, as X maintainer, X management, Magento maintainer, I can say that uh, the most I've learned by analyzing others' code. 
So don't be afraid, go to Magento GitHub or another uh, extension like Smile, Elastic Suite, uh, GitHub, and learn from their experience, from their mistakes uh, to make your code better. And of course, uh, don't limit yourself to Magento because Magento is not the only um, the only uh, e-commerce project, not only PHP project in the world. There are beautiful uh, examples of of great uh, co great testing examples, great testing approaches. For learn a variety of skills. So ninjas should have a wide range of skills to help them succeed in their mission. Don't focus just on uh, on programming. Don't focus on Magento. Uh, make sure that you have uh, you have other ways to to develop develop your brain to um, to actually uh, give you another approach to to e-commerce. And uh, I mentioned that in my interview with uh, Joseph. Uh, so one of the best ways to to uh, spread your knowledge is actually to use code words and not only in php but also in other languages and try pair programming it's might opener uh, for self-development and last step but not least communicate well you are developer you are not coder you are not just a programmer you are developer which means that you develop solutions you develop tests and that's why you should communicate well with other people because you are not writing code for the for the computer you write it for the developers for other developers that's why you need to make sure that your tests the tests that you write are self explanatory that if other developer, uh, if another developer uh, approaches your code, he exactly knows, and your test, he exactly knows what to expect, what is expected. Yeah, so there was one more, but uh, I just want you to uh, to communicate by reporting uh, with Allure, which is also described in the Word and documentation. So as I didn't make it on time, you can always uh, check Word and documentation allure section. Oof. I didn't make it on time. Fantastic, Lukash. That's really great. I appreciate uh, all that you've brought here. That, that's some, some super good information. So thanks to all of you who joined and uh, perhaps there will be a follow-up sometime. Do let us know in the comments or through other social media channels if this is something you're interested in hearing more about. Um, and again, really appreciate Lukash's time on this. So uh, thanks again for all who watched and uh, take some time this weekend or sooner rather than later to practice some of the things that you learned today uh, from Wukash. And I want to remind you that we do have a, a really uh, large Slack channel. And if you have questions and things like that, um, as you're working on these tests, uh, reach out there and uh, let's see if we can collaborate a little bit on getting some solutions uh, for the, the problems that you run into. So I, I think it's great just Wukash's live uh, coding that he did and just that that demonstration. It's it's just because someone is a an architect, a senior developer, doesn't mean they don't have issues. It's just that they're used to working through those issues. And I think if, if any of you are a little bit less experienced, perhaps, or anything like that, like to just see that, like that's just part of the way that we work. And that's, that's not a bad thing. It's not a failure, um, all of that. So uh, when you do run into a problem, keep going, keep pushing through it, and, uh, and you'll get the solution. So thanks again, Mukash, and to all of you, and we will uh, talk to you next time. See you.